Hello there. In this video, I want to calculate the moment of inertia of a cube. And specifically, I might as well write this right now, specifically, this cube is going to have a uniform mass density, a uniform mass density, and I want to find the moment of inertia of this cube about an axis that's passing right through the center of the cube, just like that, right? And we're going to do this with really no assumptions whatsoever, just directly from the definition of moment of inertia. So we can break this cube, right, into a bunch of little infinitesimal mass units, right? And each of these little infinitesimal mass units are going to have some little tiny mass, dm. There's going to be some small change in mass across these uh, units. And they're going to occupy some volume of space, dv. Right? And so, each of these little units are going to be some distance away from the axis of rotation, right? And to be clear, when I define this distance from the axis of rotation, this is perpendicular to that axis of rotation, right? So, for example, this distance from the origin of my coordinate system, which might be tempting to define, this is not what we're interested when we're trying to find moment of inertia. All that we care about is the shortest distance, this perpendicular distance from our axis of rotation. And so I'm going to denote this with a little gamma here. Right? And so moment of inertia, right? Our moment of inertia is defined as the integral, as the integral over this cube of gamma squared dm, where again, gamma is the shortest distance from the axis of rotation. Right? Now, in order to actually use this integral, we need to convert this into, uh, into a volume integral with some definite bounds that we can actually integrate over, right? And so having this little dm here, we need to manipulate this a little bit. And the way that we can do that is by recalling our definition of mass density. So a mass density, rho, this is simply going to be defined as the small changes in mass associated with each small change in volume across the entire cube. And in the case of a cube with a uniform mass density, this is simply going to be equal to, right? It's just a constant. And specifically, it's if I take the total mass of my cube and divide it by the total volume of my cube. Since this cube has side length L, this is just going to be M over L cubed, right? But the key, the key is that with this definition here, I can rewrite this little dm as dm. This is going to be equal to rho times dv. Or in other words, right, another way to say this, and this makes perfect sense, is that some mass element, some change in mass, I'm able to find the mass of that element if I just take the mass density of my cube and I multiply it, if you will, with the volume occupied by that mass element. That's all that I'm doing. And so I'm just going to substitute that in for dm. So we have i equals integral. And I'll still say cube for now. We don't need to define our regions just yet of gamma squared rho times dv. Fantastic. 
So now that we have this in terms of volume elements, we can assume that we should start seeing a volume integral appearing in the near future. Now, because rho is a constant, right, I'll simply take this out of the integral. And the next thing I'm going to do, right, I'll do that in the next step, but I'm also going to rewrite out what gamma is. Of course, we know that by, right, by Pythagorean's theorem, right, really, this distance here, and I'll go ahead and reflect this distance down into the x, y, and x, y uh, plane, right? This is going to have some x component, right? And it's also going to have some y component, right? And so, just by Pythagorean's theorem, we know that gamma squared is going to be equal to x squared plus y squared. All right, that's nice and easy. So I'll go ahead and make that substitution as well. So let's go ahead and take the row out, like I said, and I'm going to integrate over my cube. And now in this next step, I'll start thinking about the actual boundaries of my volume integral. So my integrand is just gonna be x squared plus y squared. And now, right, because I am using Cartesian coordinates, right, with x, y, and z, let's recognize that a volume element is equal to dx, dy, dz in Cartesian coordinates. Right, so just in normal rectangular Cartesian coordinates, dv will equal dx, dy, dz. It's really important to have that recognition because if we chose to use a different coordinate system, like spherical coordinates, then our volume elements would actually look different, right? They wouldn't have this form. But in this case, it's very nice and simple. Each of these cubes, right, and just so that we're perfectly clear, each of these little infinitesimal mass units are going to have some component dx and then dy and then dz and we can simply find the volume of this little mass unit by multiplying the three together and we get dx dy dz right and so that is going to tell us what we have to integrate with respect to right and then each of these again i said that this right, this axis of rotation is going to pass through the center of my cube. And so in terms of bounds, right, in terms of bounds, each of these parameters are going to range from negative L over 2 to L over 2 in my, uh, in my coordinate system, right, because this axis is just passing straight through the center. So let's go ahead and fill those in. These are going to go from negative L over 2 L over 2. Awesome. So I'll go ahead and start by integrating with respect to x. So this is going to be equal to, and for right now, I'll just ignore the, uh, the row, right? Because uh, that's just a constant that we'll deal with at the very end. So Let's go ahead and start working out how to do this integral. So we have one third x cubed plus x times y squared. And we want to evaluate this integral from L over two to minus L over two, right? And so really, this is just going to be one third times L over two cubed plus L over two times Y squared, and then minus, right, one third times minus L over two cubed, plus a minus L over two times Y squared. 
And based on the signs here, right, these minuses are each going to become, uh, right, minus of a minus is going to be positive for each of these terms. And so really, this is equal to just 2 times, right, each, right, these are just identical in the brackets. So 2 of those, and I'm going to start reducing those down as well. So this is going to be 2 times L cubed over... 24 plus L over 2Y squared, which is going to be equal to L cubed over 12 plus LY squared. Okay, awesome. So now we just integrated with respect to X. Next, we're going to have to perform the next integral with respect to Y. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I take this and I integrate with respect to Y, that's going to give me L cubed over 12 times Y plus L over 3 times Y cubed, right? And again, we want to evaluate this from minus L over 2 to L over 2. And so this is going to be equal to L cubed over 12 times L over 2 plus L over 3 times L over 2 cubed minus, and again, it's going to be just like before, right? The same exact thing is going to happen. So we're going to have L cubed over 12 times a minus L over 2 plus an L over 3 times a minus L over 2 cubed, right? But again, it's like we just have minus and minus a minus for each of these terms. So really, this is going to be equal to 2 times this term in the brackets here, right? Which is L to the fourth over 24 plus L to the fourth over 24. Interesting. And so, of course, this is just going to be equal to L to the fourth over six. Awesome. So now we simply have to integrate with respect to Z, right? And so let's go ahead and do that. Integrate with respect to Z. And, well, since this is just a constant, Right, we're just going to get L to the fourth over six times Z evaluated from minus L over two to L over two. And of course, this is just going to be equal to L to the fifth over six. Fantastic. Again, for the last step, all that we need to do now that we've evaluated out this integral, right? is we just need to multiply by our mass density row, which I said, right, because this is a uniform, because this is a uniform uh, cube with a constant mass density, right, we just have to multiply by m over l cubed. So, right, so m over l cubed times l to the fifth over 6, right? We're just going to get this cancellation here. And so we find that the moment of inertia of our cube is simply equal to m times l squared over 6. Awesome. 